Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Fragpunk. We're going to start by optimizing Windows. We're going to look at your NVIDIA parameter. And at the end, we will go inside of the game. So now for Windows, we're going to start by writing settings. And we're going to go to the settings of Windows 11. We're going to start by gaming over there. So the first one is Game Bar. This one I really recommend to deactivate it. It's causing issue and also you're losing some FPS with it. Except if you have a Ryzen uh, CPU, the 7900X 3D or the 7950X 3D, they're using uh, the game bar uh, to prioritize your CCD when you're playing video games. So super important to use that if you have those processor. If you have any other processor, just deactivate it. After that, we're going to go to graphic. We're going to change default graphic setting over there. Make sure that your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is at on. Super important to do that. We're going to go to gaming again. Capture. Capture. Make sure that everything is deactivated like this. So uh, you want to save all your resources. And the last one is game mode. Now game mode honestly is really, really good. Back then with Windows 10, it was a bit sketchy and a lot of like stuttering issue. But now you really need to using it uh, to make sure that all your resources are pri prioritizing your video games. Another thing that I recommend, we're going to go to system is your power. Uh, back then, uh, we were recommending to use the best performance, but now, honestly, just use balance. You will have better boost clock, longer boost clock. Uh, I did a couple of benchmark balance versus per best performance, and honestly, I'm getting better result with balance. So super important to do that. Another thing I want to mention is some recommendations. So make sure that your uh, XMP profile is activated if you have it on your BIOS. Super important. Make sure that you download the latest uh, chipset driver for your CPU if you have an AMD or Intel. Also, make sure that you update your BIOS to make sure that you have all the latest updates from your uh, CPU or your uh, uh, motherboard provider. Make sure that you have your Windows update up to date. And the last one is also make sure that you have the latest driver from your GPU. So if you have an NVIDIA card, Radeon or Intel, super important. They always push new update and they optimize a lot of stuff in it. So now let's go to the NVIDIA app. The first thing that I want to recommend, uh, I'm not a huge fan, honestly, of the um overlay so nvidia overlay i really recommend to deactivate this one sometimes it's causing issue like stuttering you're losing some fps with it so i really recommend to deactivate it also we're gonna go to the control panel i'm gonna show you some optimization that you can do so we're gonna go to the manage 3d setting first so the first thing that you should definitely activate it is your low latency mode make sure this one is at on Another thing that I recommend is your power management mode. This one, pretty much the same thing than the, the, the one from Windows. Make sure that you're using normal. Don't use the maximum performance. I'm getting also better boost clock, more FPS with it. And the last one is your shader cache size. By default, your cache will be a driver default like this. And normally it's 4 gig. Uh, I recommend to start with 10 if you don't have a lot of space on, on your computer. And if you have a lot of space, go with 100 gig. Honestly, it's a game changer for your cache size. Uh, you're going to struggle less with stuttering and also that your game need to recompile and stuff like that. If you install a lot of game, uh, this one can be very good for you. Now let's go to change resolution. The last one, really important to make sure that first of all, that you're selecting the uh, monitor, uh, that uh, first of all, you're using the native resolution of your monitor and also super important to have a proper refresh rate over there. Uh, by default, sometimes when you just change your monitor, it will be at 60 Hertz. Uh, so depending on the type of monitor that you buy, 144, 240, make sure that you're selecting this one. This option also, you can change it on Windows or your Radeon driver if you have a Radeon car. So no problem with that. The last one is your G-Sync. If you want to activate your G-Sync, really important to select the monitor. It needs to be compatible and you will enable over there. Uh, I'm not using G-Sync me. I always unlock my FPS because I want the lowest input lag. But if you don't like those steering line, definitely activate your G-Sync over there. So now let's go back to the game. So now inside of the game. So for display mode, I really recommend to go with full screen. You will have less input lag and more FPS. Display ratio, I like to play native. But honestly, I know in the, those kind of game, people are like to play at 16 by 10 or even 
4 by 3 so it's question of preference over there. Display resolution, make sure that you're playing native. Uh, we have other technology that we can use, upscaling technique uh, to improve FPS. FOV, uh, it's a question of preference. I like to play at 104, but if you add more FOV, you're going to lose FPS. So if you're struggling with your FPS, maybe start your FOV at 90. Filter, you can definitely test those out if you want to use them. I'm just playing default over there. Put your post-processing at, at uh, none over there. Menu frame rate limit, I just uh, go at 60. Also, it doesn't cause any issue with your thermal. But in the gameplay mode, I just go unlimited over there. Less input lag and maximum FPS. After that, vertical sync, I don't use it. I don't want to add any input lag. I, know I don't use anti tearing. You can also adjust your sharpen over there. You will probably need it if you're using DLSS or FSR. And for graphic API, I use DirectX 12. Honestly, for the past like five years, you should be fine with DirectX 12. But if you have like a very old card, I don't know, an RX 400, the 80 from Radeon and something like that. Sometimes just test your uh, DirectX 11. It can be a little bit better. Even on my um, NVIDIA 2070, it's better DirectX 12. So honestly, your card needs to be all over there. So for a uh, graphic, I recommend to use the minimalist uh, graphic uh, add-on. Honestly, the goal here is not to have like cool graphic. <laughs> you just want performance, FPS, and you want visibility. So I just go with on over there. I just simplify over here. Effect complexity, go with standard. And this is pretty much my uh, option over here. For graphic quality settings, so this is the, pl the place that we will improve uh, our FPS. So first of all, you have upscaling technique. For sure, if you have an RTX card, you have DLSS4. And honestly, it looks amazing in this game. Go with quality. Uh, you can expect 10 to 12 percent boost and because it's dlss4 even balance looks really nice so uh it's question of preference and if you are okay with the amount of fps that you have uh but uh, i just go with quality and prioritize speed dlss4 i use also the low latency reflex mode with reflex at on for dlss4 uh, I'm not a fan of frame generation in those kind of game because it adds input lag so I don't use it and I don't recommend to using it. If you don't have an RTX card definitely go with FSR3 at quality. Uh, it's not the same quality than uh, the LSS4 but honestly it does the job. If you feel that you have too much ghosting you can use no AA, no anti-aliasing but this one honestly is a bit rough. You will have a lot of noise uh, aliasing in your game so uh, it's question of preference but I know a lot of people like to play like that uh, because you kind of have a good uh, visibility. For example on, on Showdown I like to play without any uh, anti-aliasing when I play the game. So let's go back to DLSS4 over here, like this, like, like, like. Okay, so after that, the mesh quality, I recommend to go with low with this one. You can expect 4% boost in your FPS. Shadow quality at low, you can expect 10% boost. So this one is huge. Post-processing, 3 to 4% at low, but honestly, the, the game looks better. It's very blurry when you add post-processing in this game. Texture quality, if you have 8 gig of VRAM and more, go with Epic. 6 gig high, 4 gig medium, and less than 4 gig on your uh, GPU, go with low. Effect quality, I recommend to go with low to stabilize your FPS. You're not, you're not going to have like some crazy drop because of particle debris and stuff like that. Screen space reflection, I recommend to go with off. You can expect a nice 5% boost. And for visibility, deactivate depth of field, dynamic blur, dynamic blur over there. Don't use ray tracing. It's going to tank your FPS like crazy. Don't use the SSGI and the animation physical also deactivate it. With those one, you can expect a nice like 5 to 6% boost because of the ray tracing one. So this is pretty much uh, it for my frag pong guide. If you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section, post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.